Okay. Si, si no entendés nada o algo que no entendés, me puedes preguntar. O sea, okay. no tenés vergüenza. No, no. Ok, so, ok. No Mario's excited to practice his Spanglish a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll, I'll translate when, when needed. Mm -hmm. I can't understand if you speak slowly. <laughs> Okay. Very good. So it looks like Mira's uh, jumping in to join us. Um, but um, yeah, I thought, I guess I'll just kind of start us off. So um, I, I've already kind of told Mario what he's getting into here. Um, but just as kind of a summary, so we're, Mario, we're, um, he's a little bit familiar because he's uh, chatted with Hojun before and Mario's a, a close collaborator with Hojun. So he's kind of heard through osmosis what the BPRI is about. Um, but we're, Mario, we're a, a big five-year multi-organization, multi-institution project funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, and the, the, the efforts that this funding goes towards are this this um, this funding um, establishing cross institutional cross um, biological integration institutes to sort of comprehensively dissect uh, different violent biological phenomena, um, and we're particularly um, this institute or virtual institute that's set up by this grant is a big five year project to look specifically at phenotypic plasticity and even more specifically behavioral phenotypic plasticity using locusts as a really good example of that. Um, but um, we here are part of the outreach committee. And so um, the committee that's involved in, in um, intersecting with the public um, and with stakeholders. And so we've kind of come up with this series of events. Um, your colleague Hector participated in the last one. Um, to for us, the outreach committee to kind of um, talk to stakeholders and understand their plight and learn from them. And so um, did anyone want to add anything there? And then I was going to say we could kind of do a meeting format where we, uh, the, the committee and others like Mira, we introduce ourselves briefly. And then Mario has kind of prepared an introduction uh, for him and um, has some a few slides to share with us and other things before we start a Q&A session. I guess I just wanted to add one thing to what what uh, Rick did. First, I'm just very, very grateful to you, Mario, for joining us um, and, and to Rick for helping set all of this up. Um, I'm really excited about today's meeting. Um, I, I also wanted to say that, you know, I, I think Rick did a really accurate job of describing the details of what we are funded to do by NSF. But I, I do think that it's worth noting that at the top level, um, one way to think about it is this is just is probably the largest um, research, like basic science research effort into locust right now in the US. And, and we do have some flexibility in terms of the things that we look at. And, and where we're coming from is we're saying, hey, you know, we as like basic scientists had some ideas about what's interesting about locust. But we thought that we could do a better job of doing science and of doing relevant science if we speak to people who are on the front lines of interacting with locusts in their day to day life with real specific problems. Um, and so there is a possibility, of course, that um, some of the ideas that we generate in this meeting could influence our overall uh, research priorities. Yeah, very true. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, I guess I'll introduce myself really briefly and then maybe we could just do the rounds and all of us introduce ourselves to Mario. So I'm Rick Overson. I'm a research scientist at Arizona State University. Um, and um, I'm involved in a lot of the sort of uh, basic nutritional ecology research that we do here at the GLI lab and also um, have another hat where um, as Mario knows, um, I work with the, our Global Locust Network um, to um, communicate and coordinate um, information um, and, and training and, um, and other events for um, global uh, capacity building for a more sustainable locust management. Um, I'll pass the baton to someone else, Tanya. <laughs> 
I'm Chania Kosata. I'm working in BPRI as an education coordinator and as well as supporting outreach committee members to host their meeting and taking notes of the, all the meetings. <laughs> so basically my job is like to capacity development part that engaging with training and uh, also some administrative activities within BPRI to function daily basic. So happy to meet you, Mario. Great, you wanna go? Sure. I'm Britt Peterson. I'm an assistant professor in biology at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. And I am a microbial ecologist. So I'm interested in understanding primarily the bacteria that are associated with locusts in their guts, but also in other tissues and try to understand what role um, bacteria play in the physiology of the locusts. Erez, you want to go? Yes, so I'm uh, Erez Aiden. I'm a faculty member at BCM and at Rice, um, working on uh, things like the assembly of genomes, so the instructions that describe every organism uh, that are encoded in its DNA, and, uh, and specifically how the genomes fold in, uh, in 3D. So how they fold up inside the nucleus of the cell. Um, and so one of my roles in this project is we've been working on creating very high quality genomes for locust species. Those could be used for many efforts, both to understand locust on a foundational level, but also to sort of engineer approaches to locust population control and management, for instance. Hola, Mario. Bienvenidos. Um, my name is Mira, and um, I support Rick um, with his outreach efforts and uh, general um, BPRI kind of support for ASU, um, the project coordinator for the Global Locust Initiative, and work with Rick on the network. And we're grateful to. Uh, have you here and to meet you. I hope to meet you in person, um, perhaps in the Yucatan uh, this fall, um, if that works out. But um, I wanted to pop in today to get to introduce myself and hear um, the discussion for the, the committee meeting today. So thank you. All right, so maybe I'll go ahead and introduce Mario for him and then um, he can uh, start off. He has some slides uh, to show us. So Mario is the, I think I've known Mario maybe for four, four years now, four years or so. Um, he is the locust control coordinator for the Yucatan State Plant Protection Committee. Um, it's a CSV or CSVY is the Spanish acronym. Um, and he leads efforts there to manage and control the the Central American locust, Schistocerca pisifrons, which is uh, one of the locust species of the BPRI, as we know. Um, we're gonna hear, I think, some interesting contrasts to what we learned from Hector, because unlike the, the South American locust, Schistocerca pisifrons rears its head very predictably every year. So it's a kind of a very different beast. Um, but in addition to that, Mario also um, has his hands in the management of a bunch of other grasshopper species of pest concern, um, which saltamontes or tucuras as they're called, non-locust um, grasshopper pests. Um, and he's also a member of the Inter-American Coordinating Group in Plant Protection, GISSV -S is the acronym in, in Spanish. So, um, and that's an inter international American coordinating group for plant health where um, he represents the concerns of locust and grasshopper sustainable management. So um, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Mario. And um, tenías alguna una presentación, no? Con, con algunos slides? Yeah. Uh, but, so. Yeah, but uh, before of the presentation, I would like to do some comments. Uh, Mira, uh, did uh, uh, interchange image with you the past year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, you okay. grateful for know. you sending um, some photos. 
Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, and some updates on Peace of France. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I am working in Schizocerca Peace of France in the field activities and in the research. I am, uh, I am very uh, fortunate. Soy muy afortunado, no? The, uh, yeah. Because I am working in the field for the Locus Plant Protection Agency and in the research too. Yeah, I have this uh, component. Well, I am working in the label of my state, in my country, in Central America, in the continent, and I am very excited <laughs> for this. Yeah, for the small, for the big. Well, I would like to show No, no sé por qué, Mario, pero no, 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 te, no te escuchamos ya. Algo pasó. Okay. De, después de que decí, dijiste, okay. sí, sí, ya está bien. bien. Sí, sí, algo pasó. No. No sé qué. Okay. Escucha, okay. Perdimos nada más las últimas seis palabras. Ok, ok. Ok, I'm going to show a small, uh, short uh, slide about the polyphenism of the Central American locust. Here we go. Do you see? Okay. Well, the Central American locus you can see is an old pest. Yeah, we can see the distribution from Mexico to okay. Here. Okay. The distribution from Mexico to Panama. Yeah, this is an old pest. It's very important pest for us because uh, this is uh, of the Mayan culture. Yeah, maybe the Mayan culture reduced his population for the locus outbreak. Maybe. Yeah, this photo I like it because it's of uh, 1922 of the locus population in Mexico. Yeah. And 100 years in 2022 is very similar. Yeah. The, the state with locus. Sorry, can you show that again? I, I just, <laughs> I, I just, it, 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 is it very, somehow it seems to me like there's like a lot of new stuff over here, no? But maybe I didn't understand the previous map. Yeah. Que si yeah. Que quería ver la, el otro mapa, el mapa nuevo, viejo. Sí, yes. So is, sorry, I guess maybe, maybe they're on a, a different scale. I'm just, it, the, the shapes look different to me, but I don't know much about Mexican geography, so. <laughs> Se dice que es interesante que hay, si hay, se parece como si hay diferencias entre las mapas, por ejemplo, como en la parte al este. There especially, it seems like oh, it's yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have another map, but I not uh, in this slide, where in 1930, the state of Jalisco, Colima, Michoacán, is, uh, is uh, with locus too. Yeah, okay, Tamaulipas too. I want to comment, I uh, think. Uh, this is a comment. This year, this year, we had a swarm in Tamaulipas. Yeah, here in this point, we had the migration or locus swarm in this in this position to Nuevo Leon. Yeah, here. Okay. This was in February and March of this year. I am writing a paper about this uh, new phenomenon. Yeah. Maybe the climate change 
because, because my model in high split and, and others say that uh, the, the possible migration route is from Tamaulipas, Nuevo Leon, Coahuila, and south of Texas. Yeah, yeah. It's the first time where the Central American locus has this behavior from Tamaulipas to Nuevo Leon. Usually the behavior in the north of Mexico is in these places between Tamaulipas and Luis and, and other states. Yeah. I'm very struck by the fact that it seems like they're spreading like along the coast, right? Like here and there and there, it's not mm -hmm. spreading, right? But, oh. but it seems to have spread across the century. It's spread sort of along the coast. Is there something to that or? ¿Por qué? Porque se van por la costa nada más, o sea, es interesante, dice que no están en la parte central allá, que yeah. se parece como están migrando al norte por la costa. Yeah, yes, it's correct. Uh, maybe because the height, the high label. Yeah, this uh, zone. Elevation, high elevation areas there in the middle, which could be part of the reason. I mean, a basic question, you know, as it happens, right, I, I, I'm, I'm not great on my geography, but I know I'm sitting roughly there, right? A very basic question is this keeps moving along the coast. How long, how long before I start to see them at my window, right? 20 years, 30 years? I have to, in, in all of the discussions of climate change in this country, there are many extraordinary doom scenarios that have been described, many of which are quite accurate, but I've never heard anyone articulate that in 20 years, I'm going to have locust swarms outside my window in, you know, urban Texas. I just think it's interesting. And it's certainly something that people would talk about if they realized. Yeah, the, the Mario's been talking to people and there's been some kind of behind closed doors meeting, USDA meetings, but Está diciendo que es impresionante lo que decís, Mario, que, que van a llegar, que puede ser que llegarán a los, en los Estados Unidos. Y está preguntando como cuánto tiempo crees que tardaría eso. 20, under, 20 años o. Under the climate change, maybe 20 years. But in my model, in my model, maybe two or three years. Hmm. Why? Because in my model is in the field. Yeah. I am analyzing the behavior of wind temperature. In this, in, in this point, the difference of this point and this point are two, two centigrades. See? The locus are, are uh, is uh, flying for the temperature, no? Yeah, it is my opinion. However, I need to study with more information, but in the climate change, yes, maybe 20 years. <laughs> but, so, but you're, you're saying that maybe just due to climate change, 20 years, but you, you think it's going to be a lot sooner. You think this is going to be a lot sooner. You think it could be in the next couple of years based on, mm -hmm. I guess, these yeah. sort of geographic models. Yeah. 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 And, the, and the fact that they, they are such long distance dispersers, then they are tracking temperature on the wing in real time. So yeah. unlike an aphid or something that might like march slowly with yeah. climate change, they, they can yeah. spread Maybe. out. Maybe in the next two years, you no need to visit Yucatan. You're going to have the locus in the south of Texas. No, I mean, this is this is the border with the United States right here, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. these the you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, immigration from the southern border. I think everyone could agree. I disagree. You know, I think everyone on this call disagrees with a lot of it, but I think everyone could agree that we don't want billions of locusts immigrating. Um, and, and it's striking because in this entire, my understanding from like all of the conversations we've had in BPRI is that locust is a problem that's very big and very important, 
but also kind of far away, right? And what Mario seems to be saying is, by the end of this grant funding period, we should expect <laughs> yeah. that the, you know- Could be some good job security. <laughs> yeah, that many of the institutions involved will, already, will, be, over, will be overrun by locust swarms. Yeah, so hurry. Hurry and get those uh, I mean, it certainly It certainly changes <laughs> one's perspective on the problem. But I, I guess sampling will be a lot easier very soon. We, <laughs> yep. we won't have any CITES issues, nothing. Que sería más fácil para nosotros, como decís, Mario, para hacer investigación si están más cercanas. Me gustaría hacer un comentario en español. Tú sí, sí se sí, lo sí. puedes traducir porque no sé cómo hacerlo. Es una sí. broma. Ok. Mario's going to tell a joke in Spanish. <laughs> Esa joke. Ok. Cuando estuve investigando esto, me preguntaba a la gente en Tamaulipas por qué creo que se están yendo hacia Estados Unidos. Entonces yo le dije que se están yendo también por la violencia, por los narcotraficantes también se están yendo. Hacia el norte. <laughs> que están siguiendo la violencia. Sí, right. The people in, when the people in Tamil Pais asked him, Mario has a, a strange sense of humor, self-admittedly, but when the people in Tamil Pais asked him why they, he thinks the locusts are, why they're, when they ask why they think they're marching northward he, he thinks that they're going up to hang out with the narcotraficantes and the, the violence of the border so <laughs> yeah go hang out on the border where the action's hot yeah <laughs> holy smokes the joke however is uh <laughs> how high does the wall have to be to stop the locust it yeah it's like, like you know our, it's never gonna be yeah. high enough we we'll have to ask our yeah. former probably have to ask our former president <laughs> <laughs> It, it is a joke. However, in part, it's true. Why? Because the north of Mexico, we know that is a violent zone. So the people of the local field officers, they cannot to do the survey of the places because the violent zone. So the locus can't to uh, obtain the, the the outbreak yes the violence is a component very important for not to do the activities very well mm. Mm. yeah that's a very similar theme in the desert locust outbreak that yeah. has been published in the media with oman and yemen that the social political geopolitics play a, a are a, a big player yes. in some of these outbreaks. Yes, yes. And this information not is in the climate change model. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The, the leading edge of this is already probably in the United States. I mean, if you're around, I don't know, Brownsville or somewhere, you're already probably seeing the locusts that are at the very head of this humongous migration. I think as far as I know, no one has like physically found a specimen yet, but they basically for the last like 10 years, this, the the, these things have been like getting closer and closer. The actual, the board, the the fringe of the outbreak. I don't so know. From from this diagram, you think the border fence is really uh, deterring them? Well, I think the whole state's colored in on that. Yeah, no, no, on I, that map. I, yeah, I, I, I know. but I but, mean, but, but your point it, stands, which is that they're knocking at the door, basically. Yeah. But I think they haven't been detected yeah. yet. I mean, that's a very striking. I, I mean, you know, you have to think about like building bridges, but this is a striking case where you know this isn't like there's a lot of things that people mentally say oh it's like we're you know global aid we're helping people here we're helping people there why are we doing that you know and i don't agree with that but you know it has some currency right but uh but this is a great point where like you know mm -hmm. everyone's interests are fully in full alignment you know yeah figuring figuring this out and you could you could very well imagine i i think a lot of funding agencies that wouldn't ordinarily be interested in supporting this kind of thing or agencies in general that wouldn't usually be worried about this worrying about this yeah i agree yeah we could probably well, okay i'm sorry I'll, I'll 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 let mario keep going i'm sorry for talking it's so very it's very, it's very yeah 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 se dio cuenta que va a tener problemas de langosta de pronto en algunos años es ver que vive en texas 
Yeah, coming soon. <laughs> yeah, coming soon. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah. You, I, it was just Passover. So we were just talking, you know, with my family sitting, remembering that thousands of years ago there were, uh, you know, locusts. You know, Pharaoh was struck by locusts in uh, Egypt. But yeah, we think of it as usually as, you know, something that happened a long time ago, not, you know, not coming soon. Okay. Well, well and what, uh, what, what we are doing in the field, well, several activities in the field, yeah, is the survey, uh, monitoring. We need to know uh, the situation of the locks in the field, is a nymph or is adult. We are doing the survey with drones. This is a map, a beautiful uh, figure, because we can to see uh, uh, in this part are bands. These are bands. Bands. It is uh, gregarious nymphs. Yeah, they are the field locus officers. Yeah. We know the polyphenies in different species of locus. In this slide, we can to see in the left part, the desert locust, the gregarious and solitarius. In the right, the solitary and gregarious of the migratory locust. This is a, a South America locust. And here, my star, the Central American locust. Here is the solitary. A, yeah, it's, it is uh, green after it changed. We can see here uh, some spot in the pronotum, yeah? In the abdomen, yeah? This is an uh, indication of transition to gregarious. This is transient congregant phase, yeah? This is a stage uh, intermediate. Yeah between the solitary and the gregarious. The transition not is very well known. Usually when we speak of locus, we say solitary and gregarious phase, no? But the transition usually not, we don't speak about. However, this is very, very important for us the transition in this photo, for example, these spots in the body is an indicate of, oh my God, the outbreak is possibly in the next generation. Yeah, we can see the transition. This is a coloration of transition, not is gregario and not is solitary. This is a transition. This is the gregarious. Yeah, it's a band, another band. Yeah, gregarious typical color of the band. This photo, in my opinion, is the best photo that I take in my life of Locus Mang. Why? Because this, in this photo, we can see the green, yellow, and orange color. They are in the same time and the same uh, place. Yeah, and they are a transition. They are not a solitary. If, if, if we see use this insect, we can say it's a solitary. Or if we see use this insect of the left part, we can see it's a gregarious, but not in the field. They are a transition, yeah. When they become to be adults, the, the next generation will be a gregarious phase. In my opinion, is the importance of to know the transition phase, transition congregants. They are, this is a transition congress in the field. We can see one a nymph, another, another. They are not solitary, we can see. They are not gregarious. This is a transition, this is a patch. Why is important this? Because we can to construct a early warning. We can see the solitary, transients, gregario, as in a 
uh, how do you say it? <laughs> it's a light traffic. Yeah. Okay. Traffic light. Traffic light. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In the adults, they are different too. We can see the solitary and the gregarious. The gregarious are uh, red. Yeah. This is very important. It's all. This is my team. When we are working with drones, with uh, with uh, GIS and remote sensing. In my opinion, the remote sensing and the GIS is a tool important component for the locus management. Also the biological control. Can, can, can I ask a question? So do you think in terms of assessing, because you've talked about kind of two ways of assessing whether there is a likelihood of kind of gregarious behavior among the locusts. One is remote sensing, and we've talked about that actually a bunch on the, these calls. And another is these like kind of very close in pictures of locusts where you can say, oh, you can kind of see if they're, if they're getting ready to swarm. And from the standpoint of creating like an early warning system, if what you need is a lot of like close in photos, the way you might approach it could be different than if what you need is uh, like, if you could just use satellite data or drones or things like that, which data type do you think is the most important or the most valuable? Um, I mean, I, I'll just throw something out there. I mean, suppose one could, you know, contact Google and say, look, you guys have a lot of Google photos, you know, or, you know, Instagram say, look, you guys have a lot of photos. You run AI on these photos you know, just tell us, you know, in photos of locusts that are geocoded in such and such location, what fraction of them kind of look this way or kind of look that way, that would be amazingly valuable. And then, you know, like your early warning system could be Instagram or could be, you know, Google Photos or could be one of those enterprises. That's like one way to do it. The other way to do it is to do something based on satellites or drones or something like that. I'm just Otra spitballing. Otra Mario, está diciendo que, bueno, has hablado de cómo es importante tener, como decís, que es muy importante tener sensores remotos y para tener esa información, además con, con información más de, no sé cómo decir, pero gente que sí están a, allá. Pero obviamente como eso que pues, cuando hablas de los, las, los, las fases, digo, de los colores, es importante también tener esa información de de transients y las formas y eso obviamente no vas a poder obtener de satélites entonces está diciendo que como cuál sería la como la información más importante o sea sería posible tener una manera de tener algo como sensores remotos pero también tener la información con fotos de, de drones o con google o lo que sea para como tener la información esa de que estás hablando de las fases y transients pero en una manera más remote. Yes. Yeah, very, very, very well. Uh, great question. Yeah, yeah. We usually, of the general to the particular, yeah. In the general, you are using the remote sensing, yeah, with uh, information of a specific period. For example, the mating, the mating season. What need the locus in the for to season or the oviposition? They need the humidity of the soil, soil humidity. Yeah, we can to work with the with the soil humidity in the satellite imaging. For example, a SMAP, SMAP of the of the NASA. Yeah, we can see the, the place. Well, after we have the imagine, we reduce with drone, with drone. And after we reduce with the, with the field locus officer in the field, yeah, for obtaining the information. Mexico is the used country that have the locus campaign in America, yeah. Every year, the field locus officers, I obtain the information on the field of solitary, transition, gregarium, instar, uh, uh, col color, 
density and another information. And we do a relationship between the information of the heart for with the uh, with, with the satellite and obtain the pleasure of where possible maybe where going to be the next outbreak. Yeah. So yeah, so the you have a hierarchical model that integrates that ground level with the remote mm -hmm. sensing. That's what you're saying, I think, Mario. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In this yeah, moment, that's great. Yeah, in, in this moment, for example, the the locus is mating. Yeah, is mating. Yeah, we are obtaining the places where the we have the soil unity for to for to say to the field locus officer over there or over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For obtain more information, press very well. Yeah. Terrific, that was super helpful, thank you. Yeah. It, 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 I say the Mexico has the locus campaign because usually the countries of Guatemala or the South, or, or South, yeah, usually they work when they have an outbreak, yeah, and they, they do a program of four or five years for the locus control. When the locus low the density, yes, no problem, no? And after of four or five years, the locus increase again and another program. Yes, the, I, in my opinion, the key component is to have a locus program every year. Yeah? Yeah, so you so you don't have that same challenge because that's a common theme that we've talked about with other stakeholders, Mario, is that one of the big challenges is this the boom and bust cycle of the locusts, how there's a lot of them and then there's very little and that makes it hard for organizations or countries to maintain capacity. But that's interesting, kind of unique about the biology of this system that you don't have that same problem. So no. No tenés, el no tenés ese problema allá en México por como son tan predecibles cada año que yeah. no tienen los problemas de, de Senasa y de África. Mm. I am, I wrote a paper about the, the, the uh, upsurge or outbreak of the Central American locus in the Yucatán Peninsula. Right now is in review. In, in, in my conclusion is that the Central American locus has, it has an increase every two years. It's perfectly intended. Every two years, we have a peak and every four years, a peak, uh, uh, highest peak every four years. Cada dos años, un pico, y cada cuatro, un pico más. Lo dijiste, lo dijiste bien. Uh, ¿Y qué tiene uh, okay. que ver? Okay. Qué, qué tiene us, que ver? okay, for us, is a, World Cup locusts. Why? Because in every World Cup, we have a overt locust. Yeah. For us, is our forecasting. When is the World Cup? Is can they, no. can they tell you? Me? Can they tell you who's gonna win the World Cup? <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Okay. So they can tell not. you if the locusts are gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fans it's they're just fans they're there for the world cup they don't want to miss it yeah <laughs> yeah well they're not that into the game but they've just got so many people on they've got so many folks on their team you know <laughs> sí, se entendió que cada copa mundial tenemos un brote de langosta sí ahora lo que queremos hacer es que la langosta nos diga quién va a ganar ¿no? mm -hmm, eso claro you can make a lot of money if they, it's like a Groundhog's Day kind of thing, if they could predict <laughs> who's going to win. Sí. Yeah. Es eso lo que estamos haciendo. Eres, antes dijo una broma que te tengo que, tengo que traducir, que no creo que escuchas que cuando dijiste tu broma de la frontera, Eres dijo que, como hablando de nuestro presidente anterior, dijo que tan, que tan alta tenemos que construir la pared 
en la frontera para que no entren las langostas. Es, fue un, una broma de Eres. Presumably, there is actually a correlation, I should say, right? Because, like, I would assume, like, soil and field conditions are correlated. You know, like, no, no. Could, it, could advantage certain teams yeah. in the World Cup and also could advantage or dis disadvantage the Locust team. Sí, sin embargo, yo lo respondo con otra broma, si se lo puedes traducir, por okay. favor. Mario no, has I... another joke. I told him you're President Trump. How <laughs> tall do we have to build the wall joke? Just so he knew about your sense of humor. Okay. Also, no, he, missed, he missed that earlier. Lo importante no es que tan alto es el muro. Lo importante y lo básico es que está qué tan profundo es el muro. Mm, okay. He said that the, just as political advice to the United States, it's not important how tall it is. It's important how uh, far under the ground the wall is. So <laughs> it's like something we weren't focusing on. <laughs> uh. Well, he's not. He's clearly not thinking about the locust. <laughs> Hmm. Bueno. Well, Mario, could I ask you then, um, how are we doing on time? We got 15 more minutes. Um, Mario, can I ask, um, that's a, a really interesting element that you talked about. Well, so I guess one question I have is, you don't have these same obstacles or barriers that some of these institutions have, where they have to maintain capacity. Como es difícil para ellos, porque como se se aumentan y se bajan las langostas y eso no es muy predecible, como y pierden fondos y pierden como capacitación. Si no tienen esos problemas, ¿cuáles son los problemas de ustedes? O sea, ¿cuáles son la, las barreras que tienen ustedes más importantes en ese sentido? Ya, yeah. ya. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was asking him, since they don't have the boom and bust cycle problems, what are their biggest challenges and barriers since there is this interesting contrast? There so they are, don't have this challenge of maintaining political will and funds to some extent. Yeah, there are several change. Yeah. We, sorry, we have several uh, challenge. Yeah, yeah. The first, is we need a, we have the locus canal, the knowledge of the locus very different between state. For example, in Yucatan state, we are expert in the, the, the locus management, but in the south is different, in the north is different. Yeah, this uh, difference between the states of the north or the south is, uh, is, is important. Yeah, the another is how to do the control in places very difficult to access. Yeah, the violence now is a great problem in the south, in the north. Yeah, this, in my opinion, this is the great problems. Yeah, yes, yeah. You know, a uh, publication of Michel Leco, you know, about the uh, the biology of the locus not is a, the no or the locus biology not is a problem. Do you know? Yeah, this is true. Yeah, he's a uh, yeah he's a uh, just made mention of to a paper that Michel Lecoq. Um, formerly at CRAD and locustic um, expert extraordinaire came out with recently kind of a, um, an editorial kind of piece that was published in primary literature saying that uh, biology is no longer the limiting factor in the, yeah. in the locust management. So certainly important, but there's these social geopolitical issues that hamper efforts to build capacity are, are more important basically is the argument in the paper. And that, that Mario's underscoring that that's certainly their biggest challenges in Mexico. Yes, is is the challenge? Uh, is the challenge? Yeah, yeah. And another is the use of uh, the another alternatives, uh, uh, biological alternatives. For example, the biological control with metorrhizium. You know? The people usually don't believe in this alternative. The people believe in the chemical control. You know? you know? Do you, Mario, do you see metarhizium biopesticides no. as effective? Do you see them as effective? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. We are using a terrestrial aquarium in Yucatan uh, with air plan, with drones, with by grounds. Yeah, we are using I. Yeah. So the social perception is an issue. Is cost an issue? With is our is 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 una barrera que son más caras las bio, no. las biopesticidas. No, no. The price of uh, biological control or chemical control, uh, in my opinion, is similar. Yeah. In Mexico, in my opinion, and the and the result is much better in biological control. For example, in one place where usually we have outbreak every two years, when did do when when did do a uh, application in two thousand hectares by aircraft that place the population was very low for 10 years do you understand me yeah wow <laughs> okay yeah. you're not even you're not even speaking in spanglish you're actually speaking in english so yeah estás hablando en inglés te entiende muy bien no no may i ask you a question uh, yeah. just about because i'm a social scientist so just thinking about people, how they interested about the locust uh, swamp. Do they only interest they see something going to destroy their crop or do they come into you and seek information before that? Que es un, que es científica de, 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 so, no sé cómo decir social scientist in Spanish, científica <laughs> de esas cosas sociales. Uh, pero está hablando de cómo es, está interesado en lo que está interesada ella en lo que decís de, de la, ese, del factor de, de, de la gente y quiere saber cómo cuál se, se anima la gente o sea tiene que o que, cual, que, que requiere para que estén eh, motivados o interesados en el tema tiene que estar afectados personalmente o, o, o el miedo de que van a, o que llegan o, o, y Y si vos, si, si vos tenés que comunicar con ellas primeramente o so, se, se, contact, uh, se contactan a vos, no, generalmente. No, no entendí. Eh, I don't understand. Si contacta sobre la situación de langosta. Or, or, More like in real time during the swarm, o, o sobre Tanya, la or just generally speaking, or like during outbreaks, you mean? Yeah, so like people interested about like if, they wanted to go and control their farmland or protect their farmland. Do they take, go to the, these officials in the control facility asking information before that happened or normally they are interested something coming on like news covering there is a locust outbreak is coming, something like that. How the people motivated to get this information mm. about control? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Como si les, si les contactan a ustedes por su propia voluntad o, o cuando lo, lo escuchan por las noticias o, o... No. The, I say in my conference or in my workshop of locus in Mexico, Central America, South America, I say there are two types of pests, the locus and another. Yeah. Why? Why? Because the locus is a big problem of everyone. Yeah. And in Mexico, the locus problem is of the government. Yeah. yeah. Usually the people, if, if the people have a locus, what he what key do? Call government, I have locus. No, oh, I have locus. I going to kill uh, to the locus, no. But when the when we have a locus outbreak, yes, yes, usually is the participation of the people, and this usually is in the world, yeah, in Central America, in South America. I don't know. If I answered the question. 
Yeah. And so the locust is a very distinct as a pest mm -hmm. yeah. species in that it's very much perceived as a, a national government problem. And pe so people, people call their government officials when they see locusts rather than independently dealing with it. I think that's what you're saying, Mario. Yeah. Do you know uh, the next year we have the 14th International Congress of, of Top Theology, no? In Merida, Yucatan, Mexico, in my home, okay? You are invited, invited for to be with us. We're going to develop of a workshop of Central America management of biological control or visit the Mayan culture and another, this is a commercial, yeah. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Okay, remember you're going to eat the best food of the galaxy. <laughs> so yeah, 2023 is the Orthopterist Society Congress. It's also coincidentally gonna be in Merida um, so you're all invited. Mario's been tasked with uh, the arduous task like of a, organizing an international event. He's starting now. and so, Seems like a great trip for the outreach committee. Yeah. <laughs> Map some BPRI activities onto it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think Ari and I are planning on going and Hector and who you met and Mario and we Maria should, Marta Sigliano. We should just have a whole bunch of folks or, from BPRI go. We should open this <laughs> up. I, I think it's a great opportunity. Totally. It's not far, and we can see these locusts before yeah. they get here. I mean, yeah. collect some field, probably could collect some samples too while you're down there since there's outbreaks so predictably. Win, win, win. Yeah. Well, I think for the our last five minutes, we should keep the same format that we uh, came up with when we chatted with Hector and maybe ask Mario uh, what the BPRI can do for Mario, um, which is kind of a fun open-ended question. So... Um, but I think um, al final lo que queremos hacer Mario es preguntarte a vos que, que en, en una, qué podemos hacer para vos o, o en el sentido de que estamos ya como empezando un, una jornada de, de cinco años para desarrollar, desarrollar materiales, re, recursos genómicos y muchas cosas tratando de entender en una manera mucho más mucho más mucho mejor digo de la de la biología de seis especies de la de langosta incluyendo el, el de la langosta de Centroamérica y entonces no sé si tenés algunos consejos para nosotros o preguntas o cosas que podemos hacer para vos que como resultados científicos que te, te, te ayudarían o um, cualquier cosa o solo consejos para nosotros lo que di, lo que querés oh wow thank you wow great question no me lo esperaba <laughs> you didn't expect us to ask that <laughs> maybe it's the more difficult question or to me obviously mm. uh, you could also think about it and get back to us. <laughs> yeah. And we'll we'll yes. be in touch, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Why not? If you please send me an email with the email with copy of email of all people, and I can to answer by email with a time for to think. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Because for to me it was a question. Of, Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, I think, yeah, this is a, we're, we're wanting to have some of these conversations with stakeholders early on because this is a big project with a, a lot of different research fronts. Um, it's um, pretty heavily focused on the insides of locusts, so their genomes and their transcriptomes mm -hmm. and their DNA and their RNA and what makes them tick and what makes them, um, how the mechanisms of phase change work. Um, and then the, what, um, and then validating a lot of those results um, in ecological settings we wanna do as well. Um, but there's a lot of, I think we're, this is sort of still a lot of 
um, thinking and evolving in conversations with stakeholders is what we want to do to shape the research direction. And so um, any thoughts that you might have that you want to put into an email, um, we can send you some um, information about some more details about what the BPRI is doing. And um, I'd yeah, be very fascinated to hear more that the transitional form was not something that I focus on a lot or think about. That was really fascinating, the transients. Yo me gustaría aprender más de eso. And I think that transitional form goes without saying is something that's exciting for us to think about at the BPRI to like, you know, that's like a, a third point on the third point on the on the journey, depending on how it's been that we could that could be mapped onto a lot of the analyses we're doing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The DNA uh, research is very, very important in this in this case. In some uh, occasion, I think that there is a confusion in this species, and the DNA is a very important component for to separate the species. Yeah, for example, no, and and a study of DNA. Uh, among species of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica, for example, is very important. Yeah. 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 Some of the, and then, yeah, meditating about what you were saying, Mario, that the being able to identify the phases is, is information prognostico of the future of, of what is going to happen is really fascinating. And Alex was talking about that also. And in the, in the Caucasus region where they're managing locusts that he can use the information of the proporción de, de las fases para predecir por el pronóstico. Can I ask one last question? Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, okay, so there's a swarm of locusts that's coming and it's going to, according to Mario, the first ones are going to cross the border in the next three years. Is there anything that we can do to stop this, to turn this around, to attenuate this? Like, you know, like, okay, I mean, it's, they've been making a lot of progress in the last hundred years. Is there something we can do to stop them from making progress in the next, uh, in the next 10. Entendiste? Hay algo que podemos hacer. Hay algo que los gringos pueden hacer para parar que, que lleguen a, a nuestro país. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. We are working uh, very hard. No? However, we need to 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 to, to uh, yeah. Uh, to make to, to yeah make better. Yeah, yeah. Improve. We, yeah, yeah. We need to improve. Yeah, to improve the the management of the remote sensing. Yeah, the uh, the the models of the species distribution. For example, we are working with the max ant, for example, no? max ant. However, we need to improve this model with another shapes, yeah, for to obtain the place for to do the control, yeah, and to avoid the possible migration in the future, yeah, for example, when another mm -hmm. kit. Mm -hmm. One interesting question is whether the, the, the tail of Texas down there, which is overwhelmingly private is going to have similar geopolitical access issues with monitoring because <laughs> that's where they're going to show up and that area is largely almost entirely private land it's like giant ranch holdings which could be good or bad depending on can, can i ask how do we know that they're not here already uh, it's just all of these there's a bunch of private ranchers they might not be paying attention but they, um, they could probably be induced to pay attention if they were told that their you know ranch was about to be you know, overrun by, you know, locust. Yeah. 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 Another thing maybe is the time to start an information interchange or interchange of opinions between researchers of Mexico and USA. Because, because the Central American locus is from Mexico to Panama. However, with this climate change, if we know 
that maybe in the future we're going to to have the Central American locus in USA. Why not to prepare? It? Yeah, yeah. Number one, number two, number three, and the aim is maybe to do the survey in south of Texas. Yeah, maybe there is Central American locus, but in the solitary phase, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Holy, I mean, this is like something we clearly should be doing, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. What? We not we we not going to to wait the arrive for this warm flying. Would, 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 I think would Mario be open to like kind of helping us try to find locusts? If we could get, I don't know, private landowners to open up their ranches to us, would Mario or, you know, be open to helping us try to find this stuff? I, I mean, I know Greg was down like there. a pretty relevant thing to know. Greg was down by the border a couple of weeks ago or something, but he was looking for some other insect or something else. Wrong insect. Yeah. <laughs> right border, wrong insect. Uh, yeah. Um, he, yeah, I mean, and Mario was, um, up like a, you were like a hundred miles from the border, like several weeks ago, he's been traveling everywhere for various locusts and grasshopper outbreaks. So, um, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe in September, in September of this year, I'm going to be in the border in Tamaulipas in a mm. workshop of locusts for, for Mexico. I have, I, I have really a, you know, we talked in the last call about how like, you know, you know, Hopkins set up this little thing where you could view COVID and, and there was nothing like it before. And then people kind of got it and used it a lot. I mean, this is like a really trivial sort of thing, but like, you know, you could really imagine a data visualization of like Mario and his friends and the locusts that they're finding in Mexico that allowed you to do like a really simple thing of just like, I don't know, plot them over time or something. It just gave you a sense of like, oh yeah, they, they keep coming north. You know, you could, and like, if you just made that data visualization available, that would be, that would be a huge driver of uh, interest in this problem. You know, like I cannot imagine, you know, that that would not get major mainstream media coverage of like, here, we just created a really simple website that's just tracking this yeah. massive horde of, tens of billions of locusts that's been making its way to, you know, the United States over the last century. Mm -hmm. I'm so freaking topical. There's no I, way, there's no I, way that that does not shed a ton of just like public. I mean, I don't know if you want, right. But it, it would yeah. get people thinking about <laughs> yeah, I guess it's, in a real way. And it's, it's pretty doable. It's just take, take, you know, maybe just take geo coded locust data, you know, like a locust was spotted at this location, these GPS coordinates at such and such a date. Right. If you could collect a bunch of such data. Mm. Está diciendo que hay una animación de la, los datos que tienen ustedes allá de de Chixpe, de eso de cómo que cómo cómo siguen andando al norte cada año, como una animación que muestra que en los últimos 10 años que como cómo se están moviendo, que esa animación tenía como muchísimo poder político acá en los Estados Unidos para no sé si querés eso, pero que está diciendo que eso sí que sería como, como una cosa que sí agarra la atención de, de políticos yes. acá. Yeah. Yeah. We could make such an animation yeah, if we just had the underlying yeah. data. Also, also, I am writing a paper about the behavior. I think maybe I'm going to need your help of the, uh, uh, for to, for to write. Yeah. Because usually in my English that not is very well, I have more time in write my documents. Yeah. And this is very important because we are looking, watching the first behavior to the north. Yeah. Yeah. Very far of the of the border. We should we should set up a locust countdown clock at locustcountdownclock.org, <laughs> right? With these kinds of maps and just a little estimator saying coming soon. The, the, these locusts will arrive in the US based on our best estimate in 703 days. You know? <laughs> what you gonna do about it? Yeah. BPI right? side project, we'll put it on the website. I mean, I have to in the current cultural 
climate, climate change, immigration, all of this sort of stuff, it would create a national conversation. I, I really think it would. Like, I mean, I don't know the biggest national conversation. But there's no way that this would not create real awareness of this problem if we did that. And it seems very doable. It honestly seems like the kind of thing with the right data set, you know, could be like a project, you know, cranked out in a month and would do more on all of our outreach goals, metrics, et cetera, than like, you know, anything yeah. else we could possibly do. And, yeah. and it's real. It's real. It highlights that like, this is a problem that you might think is far away, like I did at the beginning of this call, but actually is not very far away. It is getting closer every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, very. Yeah, I agree. We should have a follow up meeting about this. I, I, I think we should have a follow up meeting about locust, you know, doomsday clock dot org. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I'm totally serious. OK, yeah. Um, yeah. How should we go about that? Do you want to? I guess está diciendo que está muy interesado en como desarrollar un algo en colaboración con ustedes para como un, un como recursos de comunicación para comunicar con la pública general allá en los Estados Unidos y o, o lo que sea de qué tan cerca es ese problema y como 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 muestra en tus modelos que está como cercándose cada año que eso nos podría ayudar como tener más como atención en ese problema y bueno, está su, sugiriendo, su, sugiriendo, está, está diciendo que como, debimos, como sería bueno tener otra junta en el futuro para hablar de cómo hacemos eso, como, como producir un recurso o algo que, para ganar, como tener más atención. Ok. To like get attention for attention's sake, I think that it, this is a, a unique way of highlighting this problem in a way that will make, you know, people understand that we should join together to work on these things, right? Um, you know, I, I think attention for attention's sake is not interesting, right? But 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 this will help people appreciate what's going on. Okay. This, this seems great. This seems yeah. like a really fun idea. I, I don't know. Uh, like, I don't know, Britt, Tania, do you guys, what do you guys think? I mean, and to me, from science communication perspective, when you say something coming, people will really interested. Yeah. And they will talk about that. So that point, we get the points that we need to get attention. I really like that idea. If that possible to do within our resources and capacity. The whole premise of all marketing for all movies named Godzilla and anything like that, you know? Maybe as a starting stage, I think we can lay out a like short article that saying that this is the what we think that we're coming and we like to have collaboration, something like that, and asking some scientists to, to share data or some to if we just make the data with... visualization and it's clear and it's beautiful and you can click on it instantly. The articles will come. Everyone will write art, like a, lo a lot of. Our oh, sorry. Did I break up there? Just for a second. I, I was saying, I, I actually think we shouldn't write the article. I think we should just do the data visualization and like kind of tweet it and, you know, maybe boost it to a couple of people we know in the media. And I think, I think the articles will get written. I don't think we'll have to write them. And I think they'll be better if other people are writing them. And we're just like the science people just documenting what's going on. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Just use our media outreach team or to kind of coordinate with Mario and if that's something that he'd be interested in doing. Yeah. But I think we need a landing make the animation. where someone can look and just see where the locusts are today, you know? Like, or you could just say, here's the northernmost locust, right? It's now, you know, 153.2 kilometers you know it's uh, you know 153,212 mm -hmm. meters from the border oh today it's 152,000 you know 119 meters from the border you know yeah. they gra they're gradually getting closer and closer to the border right we estimate it's going to cross the border at such and such time you know so a simple data visualization easy to understand third grader can understand it and we just like let some folks you know, at the times at other venues, just know, hey, by the way, we have this thing, you know, you might want to write about it. Someone's going to take that bait. Mm. 
Ok. Ya. Yeah. Bueno, seguimos hablando, Mario, pero está, estamos, sí, no, bueno, podemos seguir de hablar de como si, si eso sería factible y si sería, pero está, está interesado en, en desarrollar una animación con los datos que tenés, como algo que podemos solo tweet, nada más, para atraer más atención acá del, de ese problema que, que viene. Ok. Como, una manera de como publicar más como, o como una manera para comunicar más con, con los datos que tenés, como comunicar en una manera mejor, digo. Pero bueno, sí, so I think we could maybe we could start an email or and chat about what that might look yeah. like and the data that you have, Mario. And yeah, I have a so. quick quick question, if that's okay for Mario. Una una pregunta, Mario. Uh, si si queremos aprender más del conflicto relacionado con los como monitorio de lo que es y cosas así, hay más información o uh, donde buscaremos um, más información del conflicto. If, you know, if we wanted to shine more light on, on how that, how conflict is, is um, you know, because this stuff is happening already in Mexico, right? So it's like, this is already a problem there. And so sensationalizing it here, I think is important for drawing attention and opening dialogue. But I'm interested in perhaps putting together something about how conflict is impacting um you know desert locust piece of france i'm being able to learn more um you know how would i how would i find more is has anybody writing about how this is impacting locust control i, I apologize i have got to run but this has been awesome i would really love to follow up on this front i think we could do it and it's data driven it'd be wonderful mario thank you so much for your time this has been so fascinating Okay. Okay. In fuentes de información nada más de la violencia y cómo afecta de la. Uh -huh. Sí. The uh, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because uh, realmente no lo sé. No sé. I don't know where we can to obtain the information of the violence uh, in the north of Mexico. Yeah. I am researching uh, information because in my paper, I need to obtain uh, this information. For example, the municipality, the municipalities of, uh, or places or places where, or zones where the, the violence is highest and to see with the locus outbreak zones and interpolate in shapes, yeah, the violence and the outbreak locus, yeah. But mm -hmm. where I don't know exactly where obtaining this information. Is that mean there is a no centralized data sharing within Mexico? About locus, or he only can access to the his region. Yeah, I think he like specifically he's talking about like kind of the gnarlier issue of like the social political um, disruption and violence and how that's affecting the locust management. So that I think that information is not well oh, okay. documented. Um, it's a sort of invisible constraint to this, the national monitoring system that's not really talked about. Oh, okay. But Sorry. Mira, yeah, Mira is interested in. We're trying to, yeah, bring some of those attentions to light, but it's hard when there's not like primary, I guess, information sources. There's the main challenge there. Mario, tenés que estás bien con Laura? Tenés que ir o estás bien? Sí, quizá, oh. yes, maybe one moment. Okay, he's got one more moment. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we change the 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 objective. Because if I remember, it was of polyphenism, no? And then now we are talking about the <laughs> migration to USA. But that, but that's okay. This is more of a selfish meeting for us, I, as at least as I see it. It's like for us, because we're going to be doing a lot of, of, of biological stuff for this project. Um, and, you know, we'll also be 
coordinating with you to do field work in October. Um, but also the, the point of this meeting is for us to understand the context of locust management in the real world and what the sort of the real world challenges of stakeholders like yourself in this space. So this is very successful and very educational. And you, yeah, Yucatan is a very safe state. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe is the is the answer of the Central American locus management between Yucatan and the north of Mexico. In Yucatan, the management has been very well because this is a safe state. We can to go uh, anywhere, no? Mm. And in the north is different. Is no, maybe maybe mm -hmm. is the high risk in the north. Mm. All right. Well, does anyone have anything else? Thanks so much, Mario. So yeah, we'll I think we'll coordinate over email, uh, Tanya and and Mira and everyone. I think we can. We'll someone. Well, I can initiate an email or any anyone. But yeah, maybe we can kind of follow up and then get see. Mario, if you had any kind of thoughts for us as you've, after you've had time to think about it, like you were saying, um, and we can continue the conversation about some kind of um, animation or it would be, I think it would be a kind of an interesting thing to draw a little bit more attention to Mario's modeling data over the last decade showing, because there's been some USDA conversations behind closed doors, but certainly not the attention that it deserves. And we don't necessarily need to be alarmists potentially, but that is a really good context to shape like BPRI activities and the BPRI's focus on pisafrons and also the work that we'll be doing in the field in October as a, you know, an important context for why are we studying pisafrons? So, which Mario has delivered to us on a silver platter. So, que es muy importante eso. Que la gente acá en los Estados Unidos entiende la importancia de, 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 de la langosta centroamérica que como que está llegando. Es que bueno, seguimos hablando por correo, entonces Mario, mucho gusto. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Okay. Thank you Mario. Nice to meet you. Good to see everyone. See you. Thank you. Thank you.